Disgraced crypto king Sam Bankman fried making his first U.S. court appearance in New York after being extradited. He is facing a slew of fraud charges that could land him behind bars for the rest of his life. The FTX founder out of jail after posting a massive $250 million bond, which one prosecutor calls the largest ever. Bankman fried will now have to live under house arrest at his parents' home in California while he awaits trial. This comes as Sam's former friends, including his ex-girlfriend, flip on him. Two former top executives of Bankman frieds crypto trading empire have pled guilty to federal criminal fraud charges and are cooperating with the feds. Um, Judge, I want to go to you first. Where are we? Bird's eye view. Where are we right now in this case? Well, the fact that we didn't find out about Ellison and uh, the what, Wang, the girlfriend who ran Alameda and Wang until last night, uh, to me, tells why it took so long for the arrest of Sam Bankman Freed. Everyone's saying, why aren't they arresting him? Why aren't they arresting him? They wanted, the feds clearly wanted to get uh, these two to plead guilty to very similar charges. They have to meet the conditions of the plea deal. The conditions of the plea deal are that they testify and cooperate with the feds incriminating Sam Bankman Freed. That was done and tied up last night. And as soon as they landed in New York, it was a done deal. What that means is that the chances of this going to trial are slim to none. You've got these two who were working with him pretty much at his level. Alameda, the girlfriend who was feeding the, getting the money fed to her, um, was someone who it was involved in the day-to-day -day activities with him, as was Wank. A couple of thoughts. $250 million bond is $25 million bond, basically, you put up. The parents are putting up their house. Um, and I don't understand that because the parents have yet to be investigated as well. There are issues as it relates to the parents. But that's for another day. Um, now, the cooperation that they give to the feds will determine their own sentence. So the difference between the feds and most state prosecutions is, as a, as a state judge, I would give a sentence of X. They had to serve that X. The feds can dance around with it and say, you know what, uh, we're going to go in, and maybe they won't be sentenced until after Bankman Freed is, but they can go in and say they cooperated and we, we were going to give them a lesser sentence than we thought we were going to give them. Now, Sam Bankman Freed, he can't get away with this by saying, I didn't know enough. He actually had uh, no guidance, no regulation, no oversight. He used the money for himself. The money that went to Alameda and his girlfriend was then used for lavish gifts and homes for himself and his family. His family, which I believe includes his parents, which is, you know, pretty crazy here. But the, the, in the end, this guy's worse than Madoff. And the reason he's worse than Madoff is that Madoff, the money's much higher, but Madoff used uh, an individual's money to pay another individual. This Sam Bankman freed use the money for a lavish lifestyle for himself, his family, and real estate. He's a dirtbag. Big time. Dirtbag. You think he's a dirtbag <laughs> as well, I assume. And do you think that this also isn't a Ponzi scheme? Because that's essentially what you're saying. What Madoff did was a Ponzi scheme, and this is theft. A little worse. It's this a little is, different. A yeah. little. Just a little? I think a lot different. Yeah. It's, it's theft. Okay, we can focus on Sam Bankman Freed. And by the way, just noticing as we're speaking here, that court sketch is the most flattering court sketch I, I have ever seen. I he is not as good looking <laughs> no. as the artist no. portrays him. Um, I don't it's know like if that point of is him. worth a lot to you, but I couldn't help no, but No, it matters to me. It's on um, its tan. It's on its tan in real person. This yeah. is, listen, here's the story that matters to me, Jessica. It is less about Sam Bankman Freed. It is more about where Sam Bankman Freed spent his money. And I'm not talking about the homes or the lavish lifestyles. It's the people that benefited from his largesse. Mm -hmm. It is the media organizations that he funded. We're up to, I think, almost a half a dozen media organizations mm -hmm. who were living in some part off of the funds from FTX. It's Democrat politicians who were getting big campaign donations from Sam Bankman Freed. To me, this is the story. Okay, and the quick story is this. We have a society right now where people are unwitting participants in shaping their own lives. I think we were given incomplete and false information on so many aspects of COVID. What you have here is a bank of customers for FTX who were unwilling participants in Sam Bankman Freed's vision of the world. I will shape it for you through media. I will shape it through you through, for politics. And these people did not choose to participate in his manipulation of our world. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, Katie, I'm sure you have thoughts on Will's assessment, and I, I'd love to know also, do you think that this will lead to more attempts, at least, of government 
yeah. regulation. Well, first of all, that $250 million bond is just so eye-popping. They yeah. say it's the largest bond they've ever put out, according to the U.S. attorney. I'm fascinated to see how the defense argues that this is an unregulated industry, so therefore you can't hold my client accountable for rules that aren't in place. Mm -hmm. They're going to say it's fraud. They're trying to get them on fraud, but I think that they would probably argue that, look, there's no regulation in place for you to say where the guardrails are, so how can you hold someone accountable when the government has failed to implement these regulations? Uh, we've known for a long time that people in Capitol Hill have been paid by FTX. Uh, they wanted to get in, in their good graces by trying to pay them off so they wouldn't regulate crypto. The problem is now you're hearing a lot from politicians politicians are going way too far on the other side of the regulation. They're acting like this is a representation or an indictment of the crypto industry as a whole when people in the industry are saying, no, 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 this guy was, was fraudulently using people's money. He was stealing people's money. Don't paint us with the same broad brush just because you guys want to regulate the industry in a way that allows you to have more government control. And so it, I think it's going to be really fascinating to watch how this moves forward in this trial, or maybe not the trial, in the case, but also with legislation and how they try to figure out how they can crack down and whether it just applies as fraud or whether it's going to be some other new regulator industry. R real fast, one of the things that the prosecutors did was they got the co-defendants to plead to both securities and um, um, uh, uh, securities uh, crimes uh, so that there wouldn't be this issue about regulation. And since they admitted to it, they're going to establish a case that we got them on securities. So I think they're, the defense is going to have a hard time with that one. Yeah, but I think Jimmy? they may make the case they just will. because the regulations don't they exist. They will, but only yeah. you know, if they it go It might to not work. Right. Really quick, I'll give you a quick street-level assessment. The two things that popped out at me the most today, $250 million bail, the fact that this guy had a girlfriend. Okay, I mean that. Everybody was a little blown away when they heard that. And let me just oversimplify this case. I don't know anything about crypto. I don't know anything about regulation. Um, but there's a very simple investment tip for everybody watching at home. Never give your life savings to a guy who shows up to the meeting in shorts and a stained T-shirt. It's a tell. <laughs> it's like if you're on the street and you begin in a transaction with, you're not a cop, are you? They're kind of telling you. <laughs> this guy was a dirtbag. He did a symposium, a crypto symposium with Bill Clinton in the Bahamas where he showed up in shorts. Like, you know it's bad when Bill Clinton tells you to put pants on. But that's who this guy was. He was a dirtbag. And people weren't asleep at the wheel. They were awake at the ATM. There was so much money flying yes. around that every one of these dirtbag celebrities, Tom Brady's a dirtbag for this. He's, hey, I'm with my pal. SPF, excuse me, Shaquille O'Neal, I'm all in on this stuff, okay? Larry David, all in on this stuff. This guy had credibility, not because of his appearance, which I'm mocking, but because he was aligned with the right people. It was their credibility he traded off to dupe all of these poor people out of their life savings. Dirtbag. Dirtbag is the word of the block. Boom. <laughs> all right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.